We've had a lot of interesting coincidences here at Boulevard Music, but probably the ultimate interesting coincidence involves Bahi and his cello. I bought the cello in Armenia. It was brought from Moscow to Armenia in 1986. And when I moved to America, I couldn't take it. The cello came later to America in 1992. It was a big mistake, maybe the worst mistake in my life. I left it in the car for about 20, 25 minutes, <laughs> and it was stolen. I think the first time in my life I felt how you feel if you are close to heart attack. Maybe it's the worst feeling I ever had in, in my life when I saw the cello is not there. It's a beautiful cello, it's really beautiful, and it's old cello, about 250 years old. Best I ever had. So I was still looking, all the pawn shops, and even I heard private investigator, nothing helped. After 10 years, okay, it's, I honestly, I lost any hope. I acquired a cello a little over two years ago from a painting contractor that was working here at the shop. I took it to several different dealers to find out what the cello was worth. Eventually, uh, Kavan took a look at it. I was teaching here at Boulevard Music at the time. In between lessons, I had like two minutes, and Gary came upstairs and showed me the cello. He wanted to get my opinion of what it was worth. Vahe and I have been working together since he first arrived here in Los Angeles. We became very good friends um, maybe 16 years ago, maybe a year after the robbery. The cello had a very unusual neck graft, and I figured these repairs were obviously done in Eastern Europe or Russia probably like 50 to 100 years ago. And then it hit me like a ton of bricks. Fahe had a cello stolen 16 years before. I thought to myself, my God, this has got to be his cello. And then I got a, a call from Kavan saying, uh, I'm going to get a call from this other gentleman that he thinks might be the owner and that it was uh, stolen from him years ago. Something is really different in Kevan's voice. He said, Vahe, I think your cello is here. Then I called Gary immediately. I said, you might want to hold off on that sale tomorrow morning because I think I've just figured out whose cello this is. And he said, well, if you're right, you just lost me $7,500. Vahe comes down and I asked him one question. I said, uh, do you have any identifying marks that you want to, could tell me here? You know, I didn't need to see his pictures. He said, well, the uh, wood comes through the shape of the V in the back of the neck. And I go, this guy probably is the owner of the cello. I mean, who else would know that, you know? The biggest mystery about this whole thing is that nobody touched it for 14 years until Gary got it. Nobody even touched it. Moved one string or changed no. one string. Nobody played on it. Uh, everything was the same as he left it. Yeah. So, what happened? Where was it? To me, there's only two people in the world that could have figured out who this cello belonged to. Either Vahe himself or Kavan, who deals in cellos. And, you know, so it's weird. The very last person that saw it before I, it was going to go off into obscurity, the very last person figured it out. To describe the feeling, what I felt when I saw the cello, like, all the 16 years, which I was suffering, and like like a second passing in front of me, just so many ends. Now she's back. She's My child is back. she for me. Yeah, it's just like a beautiful lady. <laughs> it just unbelievable the, uh, the story what happened. There's a line that Bill Cosby once used: "There's always room for cello." Nice. <laughs>